Ahoy, folks. Tis episode five. Five and final for now of fine yeah. with Amira. Amira, how are you doing? Doing well. Uh, I was about to say it's quite the Monday, but it's not even Monday. So maybe that <laughs> is that. Oof. Yeah, I feel that. <laughs> Today, we're going to talk about Culture Bucket, which is a personal project of mine. And then I'm going to uh, extend it to Amira, who's going to tell us what her picks from 2019 were. But basically, every year I put together a blog called Culture Bucket. And the purpose, it solely exists so I can hear what my friends are reading. <laughs> and it gives me an excuse to reach out to like people from college and from people I met uh, and just hear the books, movies, TV shows, everything that they're into so that I can populate my own. Um, mm -hmm. And it turned into just like this annual, I don't know, event that my friends ended up looking forward to. And Amira participated last year. Right? I did. Nice. And now 2019 is over. We're in yeah, February. <laughs> <laughs> what did you end up picking? Yeah. Um, so I always find these like year in review things like so overwhelming, but also like so great because it's like shocking how many things you forget, right? That happened like 12 months ago. Oh man, yeah. Um, it's like all of the stuff I remember is from November. Right, right. And it's, and it's insane because it's like, I'll like reflect on something and be like, oh yeah, that. And it's like, either it happened two years ago or it was last week. Like time is truly a construct. Um, and I, so in 2019, I did a couple things differently that kind of affected how my like favorites are going to shake out. Um, I tried, I started this uh, reading challenge, which I fully recommend and was like, despite the fact that I did not finish it in the least, um, but it's Book Riot's reading challenge and they provide you prompts. Um, and it's really great because their prompts aren't like, you know, very typical, like read a romance novel or like read a blah, blah, blah. It'll be like, read a story from someone who was like born in South America or like read a uh, your own voices author which is an author who is reading about who is writing about characters um that share their own personal identity in some way usually in like an ethnic regard mm -hmm. um so like these prompts are like really cool make you think out of the side of the box like it's not just something you could google usually it's like you have to ask people like do you know the author blah blah, blah. so i really like that and then also um Started copying a thing that like I've seen a lot of my friends do. I think you might do this, Connor, actually, where um, you create based on the season. So like I had like a winter 2019 and like a summer 2019 playlist, and um, the rule was just any music that I was like enjoying during that season got into that playlist. Um, so those were like two different things that were really cool and like bringing new content into my life and like you know just giving me more aware and whatnot. Um, Anyways, onto the actual content. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I like hearing about the process because I, yeah. the reason that we're having this like curation series is because people are like curation machines. Just right. that's how they exist and they pick things that they like and I want to see people's processes. As, so processes. Yeah, processes. So I don't know. Anyway. But uh, I like hearing about it. Anyway. For sure. All right, so let me go ahead and share my screen. Cool. So starting in the middle, oh, as usual. Um, anyway, so I wanted to start with the book because I didn't make my reading challenge this year and it was really sad. But this book was a book I found in trying to solve the, like, hmm, let me see if I can remember the prompt. I think the prompt was um, oh, yes, actually, it's like right here. The prompt was something about um, reading a book that was translated by a woman. And so this is a book that was written by a woman and also translated by a woman. So I was like, bada bing. Um, mm. but it was also a new genre for me. It's horror. And I haven't read horror since like, I, like the closest I've ever gotten to horror was maybe in like middle school when I read this like ghost stories book. Right. Right. Um, but this is awesome because it's like a bunch of short stories put together and not horror stories. And it's like, and then the woman died and she was a ghost forever. It's more of like this woman moved to this like bad neighborhood and there was like a bunch of murders that happened. And now whenever she walks past this house, like she's like reminded about like the kid who was murdered in there and like 
and it's more of like a commentary on like socio and like socioeconomic politics and like kind of just makes like it like abstract enough so you don't see that right away but like once you're like retelling the story you're like oh shit <laughs> like so it was really well done well written um and now I like can't wait to go find more horror books yeah. this is one of my favorites that came out of that challenge um and that was it for books unfortunately or at least like um favorite that I would like a hunter yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's good to come away with at least one. As far as like reading horror, there's two that I remember that I read. I read The Shining, which was so scary. Oh man, I haven't like, you know, I, I don't even know if I've like seen it. Ooh, movie night. Yeah, uh, that is as maybe necessary. And then I think House of Leaves was the other one, which was so Ooh. scary that I had to put it down it also was just confusing oh my gosh okay is that the one where it's got like like there's like no right way to read it and there's like red lines in the margins every oh my goodness yeah i remember yeah. seeing that in high school and being like this would give the completionist in me just such a fright uh, that's that's why it exists <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um right. cool and so moving on to tv shows so dairy girls I freaking love. I I've think the never first, heard of this. Never. Okay. And so this is my thing. I feel like you just got to promo these like really small like series that happen on Netflix because this is like an Irish one, like an Irish show. And so I feel like not everyone gets this, like this, like, you know, I feel like Netflix promos most things to most people, but there's some stuff that is tailored to you. And I feel like Dairy Girls was one of it. I think uh, the season one uh, came out in 20, season two came out in 2019 and I just blew through it but I love it so much and it's basically just like like high school Irish girls in the 90s that attend Catholic school and they're just living their lives being wild it's so much fun and yeah, like it sounds really, like a good time it's, yeah, uh, it's what I imagine fun. book smart to be right yeah definitely did you not see book smart I need to Oh my gosh. Okay. I don't know if that came out in 2019, but like, absolutely. Yes. It, that is such a good movie. Um, and then the other TV show that totally killed it for me was Watchmen. I am so heartbroken to learn that it's not going to be coming out with a second season, at least of the time of this podcast recording. Right. Um, but like, oh my gosh, I think it's really up there with like Breaking Bad um, like ah, uh, like almost I don't know but it's just so good and it was so well done and it was just so interesting and it was just one of the, I feel like I feel like most more um like we're such in the area like in the era of like sequels and like you know doing right series on just, on series. right I am so yeah. aware and this is to the point where it's like oh, ad nauseum comes to mind <laughs> right right exactly and I feel like it's just such a perfect way of, you know, using pre-existing characters in a storyline, but kind of building on top of it instead of just kind of like perpetuating the same, mm -hmm. you know? It was just a really interesting way of like, have like, of like the director, you know, just kind of taking their own voice with it. And they definitely made some changes as far as like, you know, origin stories and stuff, but it was still like in line and true to the canon. So I don't know. I That's awesome. Yeah, I heard great things about this. And also, continue, like, we live in a golden age of television. Oh my gosh, yes. It's so exciting. And so this, this is like an example of that. Like when you're talking about Breaking Bad, have you, have you seen The Wire? I have tried to watch The Wire maybe two or three times and just could not do it. But I think it might be one of those things I have to force myself through and then it'll start to click. Right. And I think, like, that was maybe before our time. Mm. because I, at least for me because I was always like I was told The Wire is one of the most compelling TV shows ever and then it was said Breaking Bad was as compelling as The Wire oh weird see I know I would have said it the opposite way if at all right but this is like this is also old white people telling me this yeah <laughs> no I don't, I don't know I don't know what to believe um anyway Watchmen sounds great. I've only heard great things. Yeah, it's super good. Um, okay, cool. And so now I'm going into music, which is really funny because I feel like 2019 was when I actually like enjoyed music the most as maybe an adult. Um, 
I don't know, music, I feel like I've always been surrounded by people who love music to the point where they're like, oh, I know like the story of the band and how they've split up and come back together and how that influenced it's the Elliot. song. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Elliot and Aaron, well, yeah, I feel like Aaron's more like, uh, like knows like everything that just got released like last week. Um, but yeah, like we have friends. We have friends who cover the music. Who are here. music people and they go to the festivals. <laughs> Right. And it's like, oh, I'm sorry. I can't hang out. I have three shows I'm going to this week. It's such a light week. I have to. It's kind of an obligation. Right, right. And I'm just like (laughs) not that person. And so to like have so many like new artists come into my life and then be just as good as they were was just like killing it for me. Um, So I'll probably start with actually uh, Brutus over here. So this is like some random dude from LA. And Look he, at that guy. I know, he has such a, he has such a specific style. Um, but his music is really weird. And actually the first time I listened to it, I immediately thought of this goth bar in Portland. I think it's called Lovecraft. Yeah. But like, I was just like, he needs to perform there. Like that needs to happen. And if it never did, I would like buy a ticket to go to Portland just for that purpose. Nice. It, it's just good and it's funky and it's weird. Um, and then I think who came next was probably Kuragabin, which I was introduced to at a festival and and like them plus uh, this band that I found in 2018. Ooh, I'm actually wearing their shirt. He got hey. the boyo. Um, the two of them have kind of like sparked my like new interest in like psychedelic music. This is the kind of shit where you just want to like smokable, sit on the floor and just look at the ceiling and think about the like world and life and just yes. feel like you're floating on a damn rainbow. It's like uh, Alice Coltrane, but for today. I do not know who that is. So maybe I have to okay. look into yeah. that. I'll send you some stuff. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> if, if you want to, if you're... The activity that you described is something that I am familiar with. <laughs> <laughs> Legit. Yeah. Oh, gosh. And it's so funny. And it's interesting because, like, I don't know if their, like, hair thing is, like, a purposeful choice. That yeah, they in the have. middle, that middle um, person, I is that a wig? <laughs> no, that is, I think that is hair. I think that is their own hair. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I don't know. I'm super vibing off them. They're like a lot of fun. And it's just like, so like, I, like I've seen them both now live, uh, Kikagaku, Moyo and Kuragabin. And it's just like, gosh, it's, it's just like that perfect feeling of like, where like you're so close to the stereo that you can feel the music, like, like vibrating your bones. Yeah. Like this is the music for that. I don't know. It's just like endless beats. It's just so good. So what, what is psychedelic pop or whatever, psychedelic music? Oh my goodness. You know, I really wouldn't, I'm not that person that like knows how to like do genres and things, uh-huh. but I feel like psychedelic is just like kind of exactly what you think it would be. It'd be like what people would listen to when they're high, you know, where it's just like your brain. That's a great way to do. And it's just, yeah, I think it's like when you're like open to, you're just open. You're just open to whatever's coming and it's definitely colorful. Yeah. Because I remember I was at your house and you you put on some music and it was very good background music. And I asked you and you're like, yo, this is Kerrangbin. And I've been listening to it ever since just because I, I super vibe with it as well. It's almost magnetic. <laughs> yeah. And it's weird how it can be in the background or the foreground, right? Like, uh-huh. ugh, it's whatever you need it to be. It's great. Um, Ari Lennox was new to me this year. Um, she's pretty tight. I don't know. Yeah, she's, look at her. Yeah, I know, right? Like, she's just definitely got that attitude, and her music is very just, like, like, it's kind of the thing you want to, like, get ready to or maybe wind down with. Mm-hmm. I don't know. She's got a very good vibe, and I'm, like, really excited by her because she goes off on her Instagram. She's, like, one of those chicks that has an opinion, and she will let you know. So, I, I don't know. I'm really into this, like, era of, like, uh, being really in touch with our artists and just like yes. knowing them as like full people. And I just like appreciate that she's just like very like available and open on, you know, social media and things. So it just makes her music all the more relatable. But yeah, ooh, featured by a kitty. You got a cat visitor. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and then I've got two more. And so then uh, this is Lucy. I think her last name's pronounced Dacus. Um, 
I saw her perform at KXP where they, so KXP does this really nice thing where they'll bring people in the studio and they'll usually be like filming them to put that video on their Facebook. Um, and it's usually whoever's like in town at the time. So whoever's having a show nearby, um, but they'll also like invite people to come into this like small space next to the studio for free to just like watch the performance and you're it's like as if you're in like the front row it's like such great access and I got to see her perform there and it was just so awesome she's definitely one of those like more like emotionally charged like you know sad girl type of music um, but her music's really lovely and she's been doing this really cool thing lately where um she's like doing covers of like songs that are personal to her. And so it's just kind of fun because they're classics that you already know, but you get to see her take on it. And she like mm -hmm. explained that it was like really fun for her to do that because when it comes to her own music, she feels the need to like be very controlly about like, it needs to sound like this. It has to resonate this way. But then when it's just like, I want to do my own thing on someone else's stuff, she just gets to have like fun being a, like a musician again, right? Rather than like a creator putting like her emotions out there. Um, That's really but, cool. Yeah, she has this one song whose title escapes me at the moment, but um, I sent it to my mom because it was so relatable in that, like, uh, the song's about how, like, you'll, as, like, a daughter, you're watching your mother cr critique her own body, and you're just like, oh, well, like, I inherited your body, and, like, you don't like that, so should I not like that? And mm. I don't know, and I feel like that's just, like, such a real thing for women, and, like, it's something we're finally talking about um, with, like, you know, self-image and all of that so it's what it's just one of those things where she's like capturing something really real um but yeah and I really like her stuff um that's awesome the, yeah uh the last person I have actually doesn't have quite a profile yet I feel like they're not like that big I believe you pronounce um their name Duendita um but this song, Pray, is the song that I think is the most famous that they have and is the one that resonated with me the most. They have one specific line where I was just like, Ugh, I'm done. She gets it. We're the same. Like, we're the same. We're sister and it's fine. Um, but she has this line that says, like, I pray to my God and my mom because they're both the same. And I'm just like, oh, shit. Like, yeah, no, yeah. that's true. Like, like basically. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, and so I feel like uh, this this year in music has definitely been one of like finding, you know, my own style and other musicians and like, you know, and just like seeing the multifaceted of this because I feel like we've got, you know, we've kind of gone the route. We've gone like sad emo girl music to like experimental, like goth stuff to psychedelic pop, you know, like yeah. how these words become one genre. I don't know. <laughs> but I don't know. It's pretty cool. Oh. But That's yeah. awesome. What a year. I know. Such a, such a, such a decent year 2019 was for being as shitty as, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> pros and cons. Right, pros and cons. Oh. Uh, I can go through some of mine. If yeah. You do those. Uh, I posted on my blog, oh, but I also think there's some overlap. I think you, uh, like, are involved with some of the same circles that I am as far as media goes. So let's hop right in share my screen yo reply all mm, i'm not seeing a screen is it you're sharing? not i'm not what are you seeing your face oh there it comes wait is hey. it there yeah i see it now great so Reply all. So good. Honestly, so good. inspiration for me to be a better podcaster. Ooh. And the reason that I like it, I, when people ask me what Reply All is about, I say it's stories from the internet. And it's like casual reporting. Like it's hard journalism, but the two hosts, Alex and PJ, have a good time. And it's like they, the, uh, kind of banter that they have sustains me. And also like every couple episodes, they'll do uh, a portion called Yes, Yes, No, where their boss brings them a tweet and they have to explain it. And so I think the reason that uh, this has been so good is it's all about the internet. It's fun to listen to and also just like actual journalism. Yeah, like real stuff, like real insights. 
Exactly. And that's like, that's what I would love to do. I, I want, like, that's what we've been attempting to do, Amanda, <laughs> is just have a good time and also just talk about things that matter. Uh, like, for example, if we look uh, at this particular page, right down here, you see the Feral Hogs episode. Did you listen to that? I did. And I honestly, like, cited it as, like, uh, eye-opening. I was oh, just man. like, I was telling a friend where I was just like, it was something like, it, I don't know, the way I ex like, I, like prefaced it to a friend was like, there are so many times like, where as like a West, like a coaster, I'm just like these, these ridiculous scenarios, they make no sense. And then listening to that, I was like, oh shit, no, that's like actually a real, like 30 to 50 barrel hogs is a real freaking thing. Yeah. So problem. basically, for those that don't know, this whole article is about a tweet that was about why you would need an automatic weapon. Uh, and they were like, well, what if uh, like 30 to 50 feral hogs <laughs> like invaded your yard? And they're like, this is preposterous, but that's an actual thing in Texas. Right. And it started like a whole meme on Twitter. Yes. Kind of so every week, like every week I listen to Reply All, I go in like expecting to have a good time and then I'm almost tricked into learning something, <laughs> which I appreciate a lot. Do you have a favorite episode that you can think of? Mm, not the top of my head, but I do think that Alex and PJ's laugh are getting the same, like, more and more. Like, as oh, I yeah, yeah. On. Like, it, I, I don't know who laughed that way first is the weird thing. <laughs> yeah. Great. So this one is a very, this is a Connor thing, but I love this podcast. Akimbo with Seth Godin. Nice. Do you know Seth, Seth Godin? I feel like I do. I recognize his face and his name, but I don't know how I know him. That's because he is a marketing expert. <laughs> <laughs> That's his literal job. <laughs> it's like, I know you, but from where? You're like, right, I'm exactly. <laughs> it's because he has written so many books on marketing. He's also like shown up on like TV. Like he's a go-to guy. I believe he's a MIT grad um, or he's like very affiliated. I think he did graduate or at least attended MIT. But his whole deal is he's written several books about just like how to succeed in business and also how to like do marketing in a way that's like not shitty, it feels. You know, like a lot of the times when people are like how to succeed in business, it's like very uh like, like be a badass, wake yeah, up early. Right. Machiavelli nonsense. Mm -hmm. Um but Akimbo is like a 20 minute podcast that comes out once a week and it's just about um like being a professional in the like in the internet age and i love i love it so much because <laughs> seth opens very slowly he speaks so clearly he says hi it's seth and this is akimbo <laughs> Oh, every episode and uh just i'm gonna throw a bunch of facts about it he talked about his process he records his podcast in the shower uh and by that he just means he just sets up his booth uh inside of his shower not while he's showering right he's okay. recording at home and um i just get tremendous insight every time if i like feel stuck i can listen to akimbo and the first 10 to 15 minutes is like him doing essentially an essay on an idea. And then afterwards, he takes questions. Mm. The thesis of the show and that he stated recently was that we are responsible for the ideas that we share on the internet. And so he was like, if you're going to maximize good, you have the power of communicating to an audience, which gives you the responsibility of sharing the things that you think matter to that audience. Mm. And so he says, that's why I do this show. He says, like, the stuff I talk about is, like, I'm not doing it, like, entirely for money. It's because I believe that these things um, matter or are important to think about, especially in, like, the ever-changing internet landscape. Great shit. <laughs> Ah, so that, that, that such is a good meta conversation about the internet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So now these are some. So, do you watch Joanna Sedita, Sedia, Sedia? I am not aware of them. No. So, Sedia. 
the next couple, the next four things that I'm going to go through are, is YouTube I accidentally watched. Uh -huh. And the way it works is Cheyenne's very good at watching YouTube. She'll, you know, usually have something going and I'll wander into the room, sit down, and then suddenly get sucked in and find something that I love. Yeah. Stuff that I would never seek out. Joanna Cedia is a vlogger. She like went viral last year, but does really uh, hilarious personal vlogs that are kind of like, <laughs> it's almost Pee Wee Herman-esque, but in real life. Huh. And uh, she lives, I think, in Canada. And did she have like a main video that blew up? Right. Got it. Did you hear any of that? Barely. Okay. So basically, she made a response video to another famous YouTuber, um, just like kind of criticizing her merchandise. And that blew up. And thus, she had a career and I believe has won awards for her vlogs. Um, so I really enjoy these because they're... Awesome. What's that? I did not know there was like awards for vlogs. Oh, yeah. I, I Like, what are they called? The Webbies? Oh. Dreamies? Something like that. Oh, cool. Um, but good time. Uh, she's like just an inspiration uh, as far as like being your weird self. Oh, cool. Uh, I think everyone knows the Try Guys. I now know who they are. Uh, you know? I don't know if I know who they are. Got it. So the Try Guys, they, are, they were a BuzzFeed um, like project where they would just, they're four guys that would try things. <laughs> very, br very broad. Okay, yeah. And uh, it's almost just for their personality. So like, for example, they'll go to um, like fast food chains and just like try each things, uh, everything on their menu, or they'll um, just like meet up with professionals and drive while stoned. Uh, mm -hmm. Just like, it's essentially just to watch them do an assortment of things, like rating fruits and uh, fruits from best to worst. <laughs> it's, it's uh, like great contact to just turn on and kind of chill out to. Okay, yeah. It's good background um, TV, but I surprisingly like really enjoyed it. Um, yeah. And I think I'm surprised because this is not the kind of stuff I watch at all. I almost watch coding tutorials exclusively. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, yes, yeah, so this, yeah, definitely in the category of like, I learned that I like this based on how many times I watched it. Yeah. <laughs> True. Uh, yeah. And now I think I follow all of them on TikTok as well. Oh, legit. Too legit to quit. Yeah. This is a weird one. Um, yeah, no, Wait. you're going to explain this. Okay. So maybe it's not that weird. It's called Delightful. And... Okay. It's this woman who lives in South Korea and she takes uh, dolls, like Bratz dolls or Mon Monster High, Monster High exclusively? Uh, pretty much. Okay, Monster High dolls. Wipes all of the like facial features off and then will cr make her own clothes and modify them into like one-off originals. Yes, okay, so I've seen this type of thing before, but, I, but I've never like seen a person do it consistently. This is pretty cool. Incredible. It's like, it's as engaging as an episode of How It's Made. Because you like wander into a room when How It's Made is on it and you cannot leave. Because you're like, whoa, this is awesome. Oh, nice. And also, you might like it because she does a lot of sewing, but it's very tiny sewing. What? Oh. Yeah, this, uh, it's basically like watching someone craft things at an expert level mm, which is so very satisfying to watch yeah exactly. that's exactly what i was thinking 
and like she'll design the dolls and also just show her sketches and then you'll watch her try to bring her sketch to life the whole process is just like you are you're very good at this that's it's so nice to watch people that are good at the thing that they're doing oh gosh that's just a whole satisfying section yeah i think that's <laughs> yeah i w i hope to be one of those people one day <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. All right. So last one on this on this chunk. Uh peaceful cuisine. Have, have you heard of this? Have you seen this? Or no, but this person has a very like strong style. Yes. Yeah, so it, it's all like they're as you can see, some of them are just straight up ASMR videos. Okay, yeah. But uh this person uh will just make food and it's very pleasant to watch. It's almost like background. <laughs> yeah, again, it's how it's made. It's someone very good at making food, yeah. doing very high level production that is just super pleasing to watch. Mm. So it's like visual, like candy. Mm -hmm. And they'll make, make a, an assortment of vegan treats. And I have watched a lot of this. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And like, do they make a, like for the ASMR ones, is it like they make a point of hitting the ASMR thing or? Oh like, yeah. Like the sound, the sound yeah, stuff, like breaking the, stuff and the things. breads and things. Um, yeah. I just, uh, <laughs> I'm just so continuously surprised at the things that like Cheyenne will introduce me to that I would like, <laughs> I would never have cared about. <laughs> Well, it's like you wouldn't even know to ask for this, you know? It's yes. like it's not something would you would know. Yeah. It just it's just someone provides it and you're like, oh, this hits a spot that I never even considered. Right. Yeah. And I think that's what's helpful about like curation. Like because of Cheyenne's involvement in YouTube, I've just been exposed like through osmosis just to very good YouTube. And mm -hmm. I hope that like by more people just sharing the things that they like, I can be exposed to like things that I've never, I would have ever been interested in, especially the weirder stuff. Yeah, yeah, the more niche things that takes Which, a while to get to. Yes. Which brings me to my last point. TikTok. Mm -hmm. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stop sharing before I, are you on TikTok? I am on TikTok. I'm not on that new one. There's but... a new TikTok? Not, well, I mean, what it, it just got bite? Bite, yeah. Okay, so okay, I'm getting on my chair. <laughs> <laughs> Vine died like two years ago, right? R.I.P. I'm still unclear why that happened, but I loved Vine. I was on Vine. I was part of a community. Felt great. Very, very sad when it was shut down. Then there was an app called Musically that came around. Do you remember this? It was lip syncing. <laughs> And that turned into TikTok, which last year I joined. And it is surprisingly great. So good. <laughs> uh, I learned that the average time spent on TikTok for users is 53 minutes. I don't doubt that in the least. And I it's... would say that's a single session. <laughs> yes, like a day. truly, truly. Yeah. And what I appreciate it about it is a lot, like, I don't know if it's tailored to me, but the content that I get, a majority of it is wholesome. Oh, yeah. I feel like TikTok was actually one of the, like, main arguments when, like, all the comedians were coming out being like, if I can't be slightly racist or misogynistic or whatever, how can I be funny? And they're like, look literally at look at TikTok, like, all of it is good and none of it is mean to anybody <laughs> or most yeah. of it. And, like, I hear from creators, like, there's some ag aggressive, like, um, just uh moderation going on like they'll just straight up take down videos that don't match their policies and creators get kind of taken aback by that but mm -hmm. the result is a, a high um percentage of great content however here's what i found like it's very easy to share single videos yeah on like Twitter or to text them to someone, but you can't share like playlist of greatest hits. You can make compilations. Ooh, yeah. So, brings me to my next thing. I put this together this weekend. It was a pain in the ass, but I did it. 
Uh, so this, a gallery. it's a little going to be a gallery of all my favorite TikToks. And so what I do is I have this uh, air table, which I just feed all these into from my phone. I just put in mm -hmm. ones that I really like. Mm -hmm. and then it will render on this page and people can browse and click them. What I want is to click and have it show up on the page, but I can't figure out how to do that. So right now it just opens in a new tab. But this allows me to say like, hey, the here's a playlist of all the ones that I think are exceptionally oh. good. Oh man, I know because it's so hard because like I feel like people our age, we have to sell them on TikTok because they're like, that's for high schoolers. And I'm like, but it's good. And I have to scroll through my favorites to be like, this is the one that will convince you. Right. <laughs> and so I don't have that, that saving feature. So I'm trying to like do that. I also have another spreadsheet that uh, I, w I want to find somewhere, but it's basically uh, I'm keeping track of all the memes that happen uh, because yeah. people will hop on these trends every once in a while and there's a specific format for each of them. Like, have you noticed this? On TikTok? Yeah. Yes, there's like this weird one where you like spread information but you dance a specific dance in the background. Don't know yes. what that's about, but yeah. So like, for example, this is what the, the sheet looks like. Oh yes, the hand activated three photo thing. Yeah. yeah. I know that one. And so I realized that like the, it's almost a new thing every week is what it feels like. Uh, yeah. I, Which is like the velocity of things. And there's like maybe three memes happening during any given week. Gosh. But I've just started this tracking. And hopefully I, I want to be able to plot this out in the future. <laughs> Oh my goodness, this is, that's a wild errand you put yourself on. I keep up with the internet, basically. <laughs> it's my job. Honestly, I feel like we're like, you're taking a bit from like Gaga, where she was like, I studied fame and that is how I became famous. And you're like, studying the internet to become the internet. <laughs> oh my God. Great. I didn't know Lady Gaga did that. Yeah, or at least I, she claimed to to have like studied all the greats and that's like, cause I, cause I feel like the beginning of her career was a lot of like stunts, you know, like yeah. outfits and performances that were kind of over the top and wild. And now that she's established herself, she's kind of like doing a different thing, but yeah, student of fame. Damn. Anyway, that's my culture bucket. And thank you for sharing yours. Yeah, that was legit, dude. Good stuff. This, and this has been fine. We're going to keep on doing this, whether we, Blog, vlog about it or not. I know, right? <laughs> um, but thank you all for joining us, and we will see you next time around. Yeah, thanks. Great. Talk to you all later.